I did my PhD in India and I was very much sure that I want to do I want to have a postdoctoral experience abroad. Here I think there's a good balance between family and work and but in India it's not very common to you know work out or the work is your identity in India. Yeah, it's infamous for uh, people being not so talkative uh, which is quite opposite that of India. <laughs> but I love this. I love this about Scandinavia. There is very very less politics uh, in work. I'm a part of the Indian Association, I'm a member there because uh, I it's like you know a little home away from home so I would really suggest everyone who is pursuing a PhD in India to get a foreign exposure. Okay, what do you do in Lulia University? Yeah, so I work as a postdoc in LTU uh, yeah. and I work in Division of Fluid Mechanics here. Mm -hmm. I'm working on hydrogen transport so it's quite a trending topic here in North. A lot of research is focused on green transition these mm. days and hydrogen is like it plays a key role in green transition so that's what I'm working on. Yeah. How did you come to know about this postdoc position? So when I was doing my PhD like when I was towards the end of my PhD I started looking for postdoctoral opportunities uh, abroad because uh, I did my PhD in India and I was very much sure that I want to do I want to have a postdoctoral experience abroad so I was looking for opportunities and I had signed up to the newsletters of different universities and LTU was one of them so when opposition popped up it landed in my email and then I applied to it as a matter of coincidence my PhD supervisor also did his postdoc here mm. so he referred me and then I applied and then I was shortlisted for an interview and then I took an interview we had to present uh, I had to give a presentation so I gave a presentation based on the topics they gave me which were all related to hydrogen transport mm. and then uh, the interview went on for 40 minutes or so and then yes now I'm here so there was one interview Yes, there uh, and was one interview. And that includes the presentation as well. Yes, exactly. It includes the presentation. And uh, during the selection criteria, I think they wanted a cover letter to show, like, I had to prove verbally how I fit in the position and how I can bring about outcomes of, uh, like, the results, publishable results, of course. And also, I had to um, submit my CV. So, cover letter, CV. Yeah, just these two. These two are the most important. Yeah. And then the rest, I think, for the visa purpose, you needed some documents. Yes. Uh, so when I got an approval that I was selected, uh, I needed a hosting agreement. So they provided me with a hosting agreement and to apply for visa uh, because mine was a work permit because I'm here for more than one years and I'm since I'm working because postdoc is considered to be a job. So I needed a residence permit. So for the application process of the visa, so first uh, it's very important to know that it's a work permit, it's not a study permit or it's not a study visa. So we need a residence permit also because uh, my, post my postdoc was more than one year. So for that, uh, if it's more than one year, you need a work permit and that constitutes the resident visa, residence permit. So that is what is the visa or what? I was talking about the application requirements for visa. So first you apply using your hosting agreement and your passport and then there's an online application you fill in. And then there's a fee also you have to pay for it mm -hmm. through your debit card or anything. Mm -hmm. And then they call you for biometrics. So you submit your biometrics and then after everything is done and you are verified and everything is good to go, you can collect your residence permit. So that is the process. Was it easy to find the visa or was it a difficult process? How was uh, your experience? It was quite easy uh, because the online system was quite easy to navigate through. And uh, yeah, it was, it was not difficult. And it took me, I think, uh, around two months to get my residence permit. So I think, yeah, it was quite smooth and fast, I would say. So yeah. Yes, so just I want to give this background information a little bit that when I was doing my internship at IIT Patna and that was year perhaps 2020. Yes. So she was doing her PhD in the there lab. in the same yeah in the same lab. Mm -hmm. So that's how I came to know about Rashna. Yes. But what was your PhD about? So my PhD was about grease lubrication and its flow in different machine components, uh, including roller bearings and double restriction seals. So it was more oriented towards fluid mechanics rather than tribology and wear. So yeah, that that's what my PhD is about. <laughs> yeah. So here, 
is there is a building called e building which is like we will be passing here right soon and then e building i did my masters in mostly of my experiments in the machine elements division and she has her you have your labs in the fluid mechanics division yes. which is opposite um in the same building opposite to machine elements division right yes that's correct yes so uh, what was your uh, bachelor's and masters about uh, so my bachelor's i had i did my bachelor's in mechanical engineering so that's quite a broad area and i did that from a state called bihar in india yeah and uh, then i did not do masters but i directly jumped into phd which uh, was i would say a tough thing to do because masters gives you a bit of research exposure so i did not have any exposure during my phd but yeah somehow i managed the first few oh i think the battery died no oh, it's okay it's recording if it's blinking it means it's recording okay. so uh, you did your bachelor's in which place in bihar uh, so there's a university called muzaffarpur institute of technology mm. it's in muzaffarpur so yeah from that uh, place in bihar yeah and then i moved to patna uh, iit patna for my phd and my phd is in thermal engineering so yes so did you did you actually knew that you want to go to foreign for your higher studies or did you have any plan or does it is just happened over time uh, i would say phd just happened over time i don't know how i landed in a phd but afterwards i think somehow more or less everything was planned i always wanted to go abroad during my phd and i don't know i've never been to germany yet but i always wanted to go to germany for a postdoc uh, and yeah maybe like all the time. mechanical engineers most of the mechanical engineers yeah i want to go to germany yes yeah. it's like a mechanical hub everybody wants to go there yes yes so, that's yeah. true mm -hmm. yeah so and um, so you grew up in muzaffar muzaffar nagar muzaffarpur muzaffarnagar muzaffar muzaffar is in uttar pradesh sorry yeah uh, i grew up in bihar i grew up i think most part of my childhood was in patna mm. and then i moved to muzaffarpur for my bachelor's mm. so yeah yeah and i think one of the biggest challenges that people from our region face yeah. usually is the is english right mm -hmm. so i come from purvanchal region uh, gazipur and um, to like we do, didn't grew up speaking english yeah. so it was a little bit of challenge to learn to speak english and to get this ielts certificate or toefl certificate mm -hmm. so i appeared in this exam called toefl mm -hmm. uh, because our masters required this certificate yeah. but did you have any toefl or ielts requirement for phd uh, for postdoc no there are no such requirements for a postdoc because uh, postdoc is a job and i don't think th these are uh, these certifications are required for studying so no i was not required any english certifications but then yeah they did ask me if my english fluency is okay and i said i feel it is okay so yeah so how am i managing so how you practice uh, speaking english uh i would say i did not practice as such mm. because uh, like i studied in a uh, cbse school uh, mm. like central board of secondary education and in there all the subjects are taught in english and we speak in english in the school so english somehow became my second language so i did not need to practice it as such it's just yeah it's it's like a part of me ah okay mm. i just want to tell a small story that i have and <laughs> is that uh, to to learn and to practice english What I used to do is I used to call the customer care in India when I was in India and they had this option press 1 for Hindi press 2 for English so I used to press 2 for English and we used to tell them hey you know I have a problem in my network okay sir what's the problem network looks fine <laughs> so I used to talk with them uh, for a while about this so that's how I learned things yeah, but you grew up your since your childhood in Muzaffarpur in Bihar uh, no hmm. in Patna in Bihar and then I moved to Muzaffarpur for my bachelor's and All right, yeah. my parents now live there Okay yeah. So as there were there any people around in the university who were going abroad that you came to know or you networked and you came to know what the process is or you came to IIT Patna for PhD and then from there you came to know about the process to go abroad or meeting people making connections mm -hmm. or ideas about this. Uh so it, during PhD I think it's the case in probably all of India probably that during PhD everybody wants to go to like a better university and have a foreign exposure because a trend in India in like most of the universities and I don't think it's only in India like if you want to continue your career in academia 
it's a good thing to do a postdoc like have a you know contractual position in a university to get foreign exposure in different labs so that's a good thing and that's what uh, most of the people look forward to so we all have seniors who were going for postdoc in foreign countries so we do have connections but then it's not like you will land in the same university as your seniors do but you do get ideas like there is a good position there you know same area of work is going in this university or that university there are good people around the world so we get to know about a lot of people so yeah. yes and i think i would there is one very important uh, difference maybe is that in india while you do phd or you are doing postdoc i'm not sure about the postdoc though mm. that you usually are working like the work life balance is like a bit of always a difficult Easy. thing to manage because it's a lot of work people work very hard during the phd and perhaps the same in postdoc how is it different um, being a postdoc here than being a phd in india uh, when it comes to work life balance uh, i i would say the work life balance is pretty nice here and uh, somehow i don't think that it is completely true that in india people work very hard and a lot because uh, i think in some way we do not have defined working hours so it's not like we have to put our best in those 8 hours we get and then we do our life like most of us are very hard working of course but then here i think there's a good balance between family and work and also people do their best during those 8 hours they put in the work and then they also pursue their hobbies focus on workout so that's a good thing people here do here even during phd or masters or whatever age group or whatever job group they are in but in india it's not very common to you know work out or they always like work is your identity in india and i don't really work out yes <laughs> yeah that that is the case in india we are we are really hard working but we need to unlearn that and try to focus also on our physical health mental health and yeah try to spend some good time with family <laughs> so yeah Work is a part of me. It's not you. Uh, so, what's your plan after the postdoc? Are you gonna stay, or I, or are you gonna go back to India? Uh, well, I love Sweden, so uh, I want to stay, and I'm applying for. I'm actually thinking of applying for maybe one or two more years of postdoc, or more uh, because I want to gain more research experience. So, I'm applying at different places. So, let's see if I land into a better university in Scandinavia because. Uh, it will be better if i stay in scandinavia because i love the culture and uh, scandinavia is yeah it's infamous for uh, people being not so talkative uh, which is quite opposite that of india <laughs> but i love this i love this is about scandinavia so i hope i get to stay here longer. i'm going to keep this one yes so my key take away would be that i would really suggest everyone who is pursuing a phd in india to get a foreign exposure work in a foreign lab in a good university and it's also important for your overall personality development not only career because you will get to know a completely different side of you when you live in a foreign country and not just visit a foreign country so please do that if you get a chance to yeah plus i think it's also broadens your um idea about the world pretty good it teaches you how to respect differences this is something we indians really do not learn in india because we are a bit <laughs> intolerant towards differences so hard take away and of course for women i would say that is uh, like uh, most of the parts of scandinavia i think are uh, like far far safer than india so like you can go out anytime anywhere and it's quite safe and you'll enjoy a really healthy and nice life so mm. yeah so what one i think one also aspect i want to talk to you about is that um, what are the cultural differences you found or anything you found like is shocking when you came from uh, india to sweden uh, so uh, cultural differences are that people are really kind warm and is it the same in india <laughs> i would say that uh, it's it's no it's a bit different people are kind and warm to you only when they know you and only when they are related to you not in all cases in general mm -hmm. and uh, yes uh, it's like i don't know i i feel the people are warmer here and also uh, there is very very less politics uh, in work and you get what you deserve so uh, you don't have to focus on that like the politics mm. part you just work hard and then you mm. grow nobody is going to take your credits so that's like in most parts of the country but mm. i'm not sure if 
it's everywhere but in most parts most parts of the country mm. and then people of course this is i would say the major factor i love sweden is that people respect differences that if you say no they respect it they never push you that no you should do it you should do it you should do it so that's a very good point if you like a mango and i like an apple it doesn't mean we are enemies so yes that's true yeah when you came first time did you find like oh it's it's so different like maybe one thing could be for me was the winter is like a it's so it's so intense here the winter is like a uh, it's so thick snow for many many months uh sun is almost you'll find like it's uh, it doesn't sunset doesn't happen during the summer time uh, and um, in the winter sunrise doesn't happen for months so things like that was like shocking for me mm-hmm. not much things were shocking for me in sweden because before sweden i lived in the uk and slovenia but for you because you came directly from india to sweden what was for you yeah but i had seen like too many youtube videos uh, uh, regarding the weather and everything so that was not quite of a surprise but what there are some ghosts going there some ghosts <laughs> <laughs> yes so uh, but uh, like i can i can point out some work life differences like mm. people do not work on weekends here uh yes i did uh, i actually didn't know either when i was doing my masters actually i was writing emails to the professors d- on sunday and saturday yeah so i figured out later also yeah so it's like uh, during my first weekend in sweden i came to office on saturday like i used to go in india but then there was nobody there and i was like where are the people <laughs> so then i was like okay uh, maybe I don't know there would be a holiday or something but then with time I got to know that nobody comes on a weekend and you only come on a weekend when you haven't finished your work during the weekdays so mm. it's not like taken positively that you're working on weekends so yes yeah. yes and I think it makes you more like it it helps you to recover it helps you to stay out of burnout yeah. um and it's also relaxing I think yeah it's good way like you recharge yourself during the weekend to work yeah. with full energy during the weekdays so that's good and vacations are also promoted here so it's like if you take a vacation your manager in general will be super happy because then he knows or he or she knows that you'll recharge yourself and will be back in full power so that's good what do you do usually like apart from um, like when you get out of your lab around 5 or 6 or 4 um, uh, yeah. or during the weekends where what do you do usually Uh, apart from work apart from work i have since i came to sweden i have started working out because mm. i never paid attention to how strong or uh, how strong i should be so now i'm really focusing on that so workout has become a key part of my daily life these days also i try to roam around because now it's like fall and only few days left <laughs> before we get the uh, depressing winters so i'm trying to enjoy my time out in nature as much as i can so that's what i do during the weekends i have a few friends so we try to cook together go to places Fr- friends from india uh, yeah i have friends from india and i live with a person who is a swede so we sometimes cook together or mm. we sometimes roam around in nature so yeah and you're also very active in indian cultural festivals or indian festivals that are organized here in, in lulu or in sweden in general yeah i i like i'm a part of the indian association i'm a member there because uh, i it's like you know a little home away from home so it's nice to celebrate all the indian festivals here with yes. this community because then we cannot go home mm. for the festivals and i really like to be mm. there also the food food is like, amazing so yeah did you also discover the swedish festivals or swedish cultures yes i have discovered uh, most of them and i find them quite nice and uh, yeah those those are nice to be a part of and i have like a swedish colleagues uh, who invite me to their festivals and then yeah we i just like to witness things and it's it's fun it's quite fun to watch it i i guess that you would find this video interesting and this talk with ashna very interesting and um if you want to suggest anything or if you want to ask ashna about any particular thing about life in sweden or in lulu in general uh, just put out a comment in the comment box thanks for watching thanks for watching if you like the video please like share and subscribe thank you bye bye hello okay ashna tell what you do <laughs> <laughs>